It's May 12th and I've been away from my house for 10 days now. I went on vacation for eight days and I had an overnight business trip. And over that time, my garden has gotten huge. It's gotten kind of out of control. So I went through all my plants today, uh, tomatoes mostly, and I pruned all of the suckers and the additional leaves that are growing on the back of my trellis that don't get irradiated by the sun. And I wanted to take this opportunity to make a tutorial on how to trell or on a how to prune your tomatoes. Now there are three main reasons why you want to prune your tomatoes. The biggest reason of all is the spread of disease. The way tomatoes get diseases is when rainwater or when you water, uh, it splashes from the soil and it splashes all over the bottom leaves and then the diseases climb up the tomato plants. Tomatoes don't get diseases from the way down or from the top down. They get them from the bottom up, from the splashing. So the way that you best protect your tomatoes from diseases, airflow, sun exposure, no leaves anywhere near the bottom. My plants, I usually try to take the leaves off the first one to two feet once they become big enough. And this guy was only about eight inches when I left in height. Now it's, it's over two feet tall. This is a Cherokee carbon tomato. It's just loaded with flowers, it looks great. So I'm going to show you how to prune tomatoes. Uh, so like I said, um, preventing the spread of disease is the number one reason to prune. The number two reason, productivity. Um, if you have all these suckers, these are called suckers, vining out all over the place, giving multiple flowers, a tomato root system can only provide so much energy and your soil only has so much nutrition in it to sustain the plant. So if there's too many flowers and too much uh, leaf growth that the root system has to sustain, your fruit is going to get smaller and smaller. So generally, the less tomatoes your plant has, the bigger the tomatoes, the more tomatoes it has to support, the smaller they're going to be. And the third big reason is just the overall manageability of the plant itself. If they get too big, they'll pull your stakes over, they'll weigh on your trellis, the, the vines will snap themselves. They can just in, get into a huge mess. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to prune my tomato plant. Now there are many ways to attack this. Um, it, the first thing you have to decide is how many main stems do you want on your tomato plant. Um, this is the main stem. It goes all the way from the bottom and you can follow it up to the top. Now this plant hasn't vined out too much yet because it's only a few weeks old, but you can see this big sucker here. This will grow into its own separate main stem if you give it enough time. And let me see if I can show you a few examples of that. This brandy boy here got so out of control on me. This actually has three main stems. I'll show you. This is a main stem here. This is the original main stem, which is the tallest. And this is the third main stem. So now all of these will be separate entities in this one tomato plant supported by this one root system. And it's hampering the size of my fruits. I, but they're, they're plenty big enough for me, but if I would have single stem this, all of these fruits would be a lot larger individually. So let's go back to the plant in question. Okay, back to the Cherokee carbon. So decide how many main stems that you want. Single stemming your plant, meaning you cut all the suckers off and you don't let them vine out, uh, that will give you the biggest tomatoes in general. That'll provide the best um, resistance against disease in general because there will be the least amount of leaf growth that can hold moisture and be susceptible to diseases. I like to keep one or two stems. If you go more than two, fruit size suffers um, and you're really increasing your chances of diseases. So the first thing I'm going to do, and everybody should do this once the plants get to a certain height, cut all of this growth off the bottom. There's just no reason to have the leaves down here. They don't absorb any sunlight because they're shaded by the whole plant. All they are is magnets for disease. So I'm going to cut all the way up here. 
Now I'm also, I've never grown this tomato plant before, so what I'm going to do is I am going to try and single stem it for as long as possible. I'm going to take this big sucker off. Um, if you want, you can take a sucker this size, it's probably about six to eight inches. You could set this in a cup of water up to about here, so all of these little fuzzies are exposed. Uh, put it in a shady corner of your countertop. That will grow true to type. Uh, it'll sprout roots. All these hairs will become long roots. It will be an exact clone of this plant. And in about two weeks, you can stick this uh, right in the ground and it'll grow into a tomato plant in and of itself. Uh, so here, now I have a real conundrum on my hands. This is, a, this is the main stem, the original main stem in the center. So I have a sucker coming off the side here, I have a sucker coming off the side here, and I have a sucker coming off the side here. So if I wanted to, I could have four main stems that are happening right here. So a little trick that I'm going to do is, all of these suckers are starting to get little flowers on them. This is a cluster of flowers, here's a cluster of flowers, here's a cluster of flowers, and here's a cluster of flowers. I am not going to touch the center stem ever. This is going to grow over the trellis by the end of the year. These other stems, one, two, three, these suckers right here, as soon as these flowers develop, this one actually is starting to now, as soon as we get a cluster of flowers on here, I'm going to top it. I'm gonna cut its head off right above the fully developed flowers. That way they turn into tomatoes, but uh, so the energy of the plant will um, will be able to sustain these tomatoes, but they won't have to sustain the growth of the suckers. So that will allow me to have more and larger tomatoes. I want to preserve these flowers, but not, um, not continue to feed all these additional main stems that I don't need. Then once all the plants get about um, four to five feet high, I'll let them sucker off in all directions because um, I want tomatoes later in the season and the more suckers, the more opportunity for flowers. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you can do it however you want. You can you know, not take your suckers off at all. You could take every sucker off and only keep one stem and go for big beefsteak tomatoes. But the one thing you definitely want to do is you want to cut these bottom vines off. I'm also going to take all the back leaves off because I don't want them sticking through my trellis, I want them exposed to the sun. So all of these are going to come off. So now the plant is a, what looks like a hollow shell of what it once was, but trust me, it'll do great. Eventually, when this plant gets another foot tall, taller, when it gets up to here, I'll cut this last one off, but for right now, I'm going to need that to absorb the energy of the sun to keep the plant growing. Now, that I have lots of room down here, I am going to mulch it. So before I do that, I'm going to just put a few tablespoons of 555 down. I'm going to put just a pinch of murate of potash crystals because these are 0060. They're very, very strong. Um, it's just a salt crystal. But the reason why I'm putting that down is um, now that all my tomatoes are in the flowering stage, potash encourages flowers to turn into tomatoes, so um, they're, they're good for fruit production, so I'm going to give all of these, literally, all of my plants just a little sprinkling of potash crystals, about that size. Um, let's see, I want to make sure that you can see that, just a little sprinkling. Now I'm going to mulch it, and mulching will hold the moisture in. is just brown mulch from Home Depot, about two or three dollars a bag, nothing special. It's just about empty. Spread it around so it's not covering up any of my drip irrigation. There, that'll keep the soil cooler. It'll keep the moisture held in longer. And when it rains, this will keep the diseases from splashing on all of my leaves by providing a 
bring like a springboard barrier between the soil that harbors all the diseases and the plants, plant itself. Now I'm going to water this just a little bit just to encourage the breakdown of the uh, potash salt crystals and to moisten the 555 they just put down to encourage uh, the natural bacteria in the soil to start breaking that down. And there you have it. That's all there is to it. That's pruning in a nutshell. Now I need to tie this all up to my trellis because this plant, well, it wants to fall over. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to hold it up. And I want to give you one more look here as to how I've pruned everything. Because the back of this trellis is not as exposed to the sun, I want to keep it clear, free and clear, of branches. That'll help keep the diseases down by making sure every time the sun shines, uh, my plants are getting irradiated and killing any bacteria or fungi that may be growing on the, the leaves. I have one little straggler here. When this gets a little bit bigger, I'm going to have to push this through the trellis because I don't want it on the back side here. I was able to feed most of this one through, but this brandy boy, <laughs> these are just the most incredible plants. It's just, it's grown like a monster while I was away. But you'll see for the most part, I've been able to keep all my other tomatoes clear of the back side of this trellis. You can see where the sun sets, that's west. So this is getting full sun coverage all day. I still have a lot of tying to do. They're starting to get out of control here. And you can also see what kind of fruit set I'm dealing with. This is a Brandy Boy. This is a San Marzano, which is starting. Starting to set fruit. This is a Mortgage Lifter Improved. You can see some really nice tomatoes down there. This is another San Marzano. Nice big plums forming down there. Cherokee purple. Big cluster of fruit. Another brandy boy. Big, big, big cluster of fruit on there. With more starting as you work your way up the stems. That's the Cherokee par carbon that we just uh, pruned. Uh, more San Marzanos. Little plums are forming there. Another mortgage lifter. This one's lagging behind a little bit. But it looks great. Oop. See how I... This was an extra sucker here. You see how I cut the top off right there? This was up to here earlier. But I cut the top off just to save the, um, the flowers. And I will put a piece of... Um, trellis tape right here and hold that up to the trellis tied up here so it supports the fruit but now I, I'll use the tomatoes energy it's finite amount of energy to grow tomatoes here instead of producing a whole nother stem beyond this main stem this Cherokee purple is one of the leaders of the pack lots of big fruit on there and of course the monster brandy boy that I need a wider camera lens to fit and one more San Marzano. Getting nice little plum tomatoes all over it. And then all the rest are just my dwarfs, which I have pruned as well. I've tried to keep all of the, um, the first 6 to 12 inches off the ground. No leaves touching the soil. This dwarf firebird sweet's a little scragglier than the others, but it'll eventually catch up. You can see how much room I leave from the bottom of the plant to the fruit. And that's what we're looking at here. Uh, that's what we're looking at here. This is how I prune. Um, if you found this video helpful and informative, please subscribe, share, like, comment. Really appreciate it. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching.